Hello, everyone. My guest today is Jonathan Grzbowski. He's the co-founder of Penji, a platform that gives you on-demand access to the top 2% of designers in the world. You can submit as many products as you want, get your completed designs back in under 48 hours, and only play, pay a flat monthly rate. His personal mission is to empower the next generation of entrepreneurs to challenge simple-minded patterns that help elevate, execute, and produce more revenue for their business. Jonathan, you ready to take us to the top? Let's do it, my man. So walk me through this. I mean, my old way of finding designers was like, you know, get a decaf coffee late at night, open up Dribble or Behance, scroll through and heart designs I liked, and then try and manually reach out to the designers and hire them. You're solving this problem. Yeah, I think that strategy still can apply. Um, but I actually would say that you could still do that and send the examples over to Penji and then we would design exactly just that. But yeah, it's ridiculously hard to find uh talented graphic designers, dependable graphic designers. And that was our problem when we were uh, working as an agency prior to coming up with Penji. Um, and now we give access to, as mentioned, the top 2% of graphic designers in the world. Um, they all, all they have to do is sign up for the service. They have a 15-day money-back guarantee. If they like what they receive, they can continue. If they don't, we part ways. We understand. We get it. So walk. Okay, so this spun out of your agency. Let's go back to the agency here for a second. What year did you launch the agency in? Oh, man, uh, I'd say 2012, 2013, 2013. Okay, got it. 2013. And then um, wh how? what was your best year in terms of revenue at the agency? Oh, man, probably like oh, 200 at most. Uh, and that didn't happen until four years into actually just making it. Like we were, it was enough to pay the bills, but... And it was only like maybe four people, five people to the max. Um, and we knew we had to pivot because a lot of the stuff that we were doing as an agency just wasn't fulfilling. Um, but the one thing that was consistent was a lot of people loved our graphic design. Um, as you may know, it's extremely tiring networking, going to networking events. At least for us, we started local uh, and we went to those like, you know, BNI meetings. We went to those like networking events that just for me as a young guy, I was. 24 at the time, um, I was the youngest guy in the room networking with people that were two times the, the age of myself. So it made it very difficult. And through those struggles, we, we knew we had to pivot. We knew we had to do something different and make it more accessible for everybody. Mm -hmm. So what year did you officially shut the agency down and go all in on Penji? Uh, well, we actually, the first year of Penji was four years ago. So around 2016, um, 2017, we stopped the agency at that time. Um, and a lot of the revenue that we were receiving from Penji, uh, and the savings that we were able to do got us through the initial spurts of what Penji was able to do. So we're actually bootstrapped. We've never received an ounce of funding. Um, we've don't plan on ever looking for funding, et cetera. And so how much of your own agency capital did you put into Penji before your first dollar of revenue? Mm, are you looking for a dollar amount? Because the dollar amount isn't really all that high. It was more so the technology. We were using the capital, our capital of people that we had in order to design and in order to um in order to build. But in terms of actual cash, we we really didn't put up much in order to make it and make it run. We did everything in the background. And then we were fueling Penji as we were getting customers. And so we were using the revenue from Penji initially and driving it back into uh, advertising, local marketing and things yeah, like that. Yeah, I'm sorry. We actually started advertising what, until... I was going to say, what I'm trying to get at is founders that can figure out how to get their first dollar of revenue without spending anything typically are like the best founders. Now, sometimes they have a bunch of cash they're sitting on, so they spend a bunch before the MVP. What I'm just trying to get a sense on, even if it's a very small amount of, of cash, is, is how much risk, how much capital did you put up pre your first project process through Penji from a paying customer? Do you know? I wouldn't, I would probably be, I would, I mean, I don't know if this is the right answer that you're looking for. And I don't, I still don't understand the full question, but I would say zero because we didn't spend any, any dollars at all. Um, so you had no to, employees to, to, that, that, that helped you build it. You, you coded it yourself. Penji in particular, zero. Waterfront Media, we use the, the, the leverage and the, the, uh, the resources from Waterfront Media, which was the agency to fuel that. So, I mean, if you're looking for that, I, I would say in all, maybe 50 to a hundred thousand dollars. 
Got it. So just to be clear, you had developers at Waterfront Agency who you were paying via the agency. You just said, hey, Correct. spend three hours a day on building this new PNG tool. Correct. Yeah. Any downtime that they had that they weren't working on client work, we had them work on PNG. Exactly right. Okay. So what's Waterfront today? Did you guys sell it or is it just shut down and all the developers are now part of PNG? Yeah, we shut it down. Um, we shut it down completely. There might be a time where you know, maybe we might consider opening it back up, but at this point, Penji's doing well and uh, we don't have a need to actually do it. But yes, everything that was once Penji uh, was once Waterfront Media. We actually did something very interesting. We fired every single person on Waterfront Media and then rehired them under Penji. And that was a very emotional thing that we did. Um, we actually sat in a meeting. We gave them uh, a slip that says, you're fired, basically. It was a little bit nicer than that. Um, we watched them tear up and say, "Like, how could you do this to me? And that emotional thing that we did was was so needed because we needed to strip away that... like. Uh, everything that we once did and remove that mental block in order to focus on the future and what we believed was the future and that was Penji. So how many full-time folks are at Penji today? There are uh, over 125. 125. And how many team members did you have in year one, 2016? I would say like 25. 25. Yeah, wow. I would so say you somewhere brought, 25. You brought 25 people on full-time like Pretty quick, which means either you put a lot of money from Waterfront Agency into supporting Penji, or you, you didn't. Well, you didn't raise we got, capital. We never raised capital. We got a ton of customers, and we just were really smart with our money. So we put out a survey before our customer, or before we created Penji, and said, "Hey, if we build this, will you come?" Essentially, and we got a pretty decent amount of people that were interested in actually. What's decent? Uh, we interviewed two hundred and fifty people. Okay, got it. And we did a lot of, we have designers in-house from the agency prior to. And um, so we're doing a lot of the graphic designs ourselves and actually through Trello. And in the background while we were raising, not raising, but while we were earning uh, revenue, we were building uh, what what we have is proprietary to us, which is the technology arm, mm -hmm. uh, which is our, our core strength to this day. Uh, and then we were just, again, fueling. Uh, there was a time where I, I didn't receive a paycheck for... Uh, close to six years of just uh, of, of saving and just driving it back into the business. How'd and you I pay your to, bills? How'd you eat? Um, we did take money when it comes to the necessities, but in terms of an actual paycheck, it was never received. I had my rent and money in terms of food uh, covered, but in terms of anything else, I didn't at all. We just literally put it back in. I could say in full confidence, I think I spent close to anywhere from a thousand to twelve hundred dollars a month in when it comes to rent and food. So you're all in costs in 2016, 2017. You were able to keep your personal living expenses under 2K per month so you could reinvest everything. Yeah. I ate dirt for literally four to six years, man. And I and honestly to this day, like real talk, I, I think that was the reason why we are where we are today. If it wasn't for those, it wasn't just me either. It was me. It was my co, my two co-founders. Like we sucked it up. We, we uh, lived together for a, a, a period of time. Um, and we made a ton of sacrifices, both, uh, physically, emotionally, spiritually with, with family, et cetera. Yeah. We, we ate dirt. So let's now walk through like the business model, right? So you, you sent us a out to 250 folks who you're already doing design work for at the agency what did you pitch them? Did you say, hey, pay 200 bucks a month to try Penji? Like, what were you actually pitching them? Yeah, we were pitching them unlimited graphic design for $79 a month. How does that work? It didn't. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't work at all. It was terrible. It was a terrible idea. Uh, I think we got our first 100 customers in under four or five months. Um, and some of them were paying 79 Some of them weren't. Uh, we had a really good outreach strategy. What the most the very, people pay you? Seventy nine bucks on the bottom end to how, how much? Well, now it's a little bit now it's much different. But, but those first hundred though, the cheapest yeah, ones paid seventy nine. There, some of them were paying seventy nine. Some of them were paying somewhere around like five hundred dollars. Okay, got it. And what does the average customer pay you today per month? Uh, our middle package is four ninety nine. So uh, I would say, and on average, it would be that. Okay. Okay. Got it. And so just to be clear, this is not a marketplace model where you have designers, you have brands that need design work, and you're taking like a fee, like fiber of transaction volume through your platform. That, that's not accurate, correct? 
Correct. Yeah, we have 150 designers essentially working for us. We pay them full time. They are under uh, our brand. They do not work for anybody else. And it allows us a little bit more uh, control. And it also allows us to train the the designer properly in order to uh, meet the standards of of what we that what we've set for uh, for ourselves. So you go from your first hundred customers back in 2016 to how many customers are you serving today now monthly? Yeah, we're approaching uh, a thousand now. Okay, a thousand. And so, where today, where are you getting most of those new customers each month? What's the growth strategy, acquisition strategy? Yeah, acquisition strategy is is in our favor. SEO. We're doubling down on content and just delivering a, a crap ton of content on a daily basis. Uh, we're doing a lot of retargeting. We're doing a lot of advertising, email marketing, and, and uh, inbound leads has been a uh, has been a godsend. We're still doing. That's the main one. The Additional side stuff would be um, cold, cold outreach. That's actually how we got on this show yep. uh, right now is is literally sending a cold email saying, hey, what's up? You're awesome. And would you mind uh, putting us on your show? And you you ended up saying yes. So um, it does work for the people listening at home. And so, I mean, can we do the math? A, hundred, a thousand customers at an average 500 bucks a month. You're doing about half a million in MRR right now. Yeah, I mean it's it's because of just like existing things and everything like that. You're looking at around um, a little bit over three fifty. Three fifty. Okay, so three hundred fifty thousand dollars per month in revenue. Again, st- still obviously healthy. Um, yeah. Where was revenue exactly a year ago? Um, I would say probably around one sixty, one seventy five this time last year. Okay. Okay. And can you go back all the way to twenty nineteen? Do you, or sorry, twenty eighteen? Do you remember? I would say somewhere around a hundred. It was for us to give you the full. If you want to continue, I, I might be able to go one more year. But I would say for the people at home that are listening, the, what's most important is for us is from one hundred to from zero to two hundred was extremely was a little bit difficult. From two hundred to four hundred, actually from two hundred to five hundred was ridiculously hard. Like we kind of stayed in limbo for a pretty decent amount of time, close to a year, a year and a half. And then once we hit uh, 600, it you're just talking went, customers, 600 customers in, in terms of customers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry for not clarifying that. But once we hit 600 from 600 and above, it just skyrocketed. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I think a lot of that has to attribute to just brand appeal, um, overall, just look and feel of our, of our website and our graphics and our, our work, uh, but also the advertising arm as well. Mm-hmm. So what are you spending on average in terms of CAC to get a new $500 a month customer today? Uh, I would, from advertising specifically? Yeah. Or yeah, you can be fully weighted CAC too if you want. Yeah. Uh, I would be somewhere around two something, um, 240, 250, somewhere around there. And that's not necessarily like amazing in terms of uh, advertising, um, but that's just the way the lay of the land is now. I mean, why do you say that? You're paying 250 bucks to get someone that pays you 500 bucks in the first month. You're it's an instant payback period. Absolutely, but we want it to be better, <laughs> as everybody else would be. But that's ins- I mean, that's that's already insane. I mean, that's like, I mean, how do you? What would you do to try to improve that? Like, why even focus any energy there? That's already best in class. Yeah, sure. Um, and that's a good question. I never really thought about it. Uh, and I mean, I'm I am. Right. I'm, I'm understanding your metrics right, correct? You, you pay 250 bucks to get a $499 a month customer? Yeah, I mean, through advertising specifically, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, I mean, I guess the thing to consider is really in a business like what you're doing, it reminds me a lot of virtual. Every designer you hire is essentially their own P&L. So if, you, yeah. if they have unallocated time where they're not working on designs for one of your customers, it's basically like wasted money essentially for you. So what margin do you like to make per full-time graphic designer? Yeah, I'll be perfectly honest. I, I don't even think that I've even thought about that. Um, okay. And from a dollar amount, because my particular background isn't necessarily the 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 numbers and cents type of thing, and that is definitely a, a valuable thing to to think about. But what I would say is, in terms of percentages, it may not have been thought of. In terms of the process and the flow, it has been. And so our unique Propos- our unique uh, strategy is there's two sides to Penji, right? There's the customer facing side, and there's a whole nother world of Penji that pretty much eliminates that type of uh, downtime. And essentially, once a designer is here 
and they do a project, it's automatically given it with as much detail as possible, spoon fed to them on a silver platter so they know exactly what to do. But in terms of like percentages and numbers and things like that, that I won't be able to give you. Well, I mean, are you profitable today or are you guys burning? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're definitely profitable. Um, you know, I'd say somewhere in the realm of 60 to 70%, depending on the month. 60, 70% of your revenue goes to the bottom line every month? Uh, in terms of profit, that that would be our profit, yes. So you're saying, I mean, on $350,000 of top line revenue monthly, 60 to 70% profit would mean your bank's going up 170 grand per month? Yeah. Okay, got it. So I guess the, the reason I'm asking these questions is because if 170 is going to your bank every month in terms of cash flow, that means you've kept your expenses to $180,000 per month all in. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Um, we are extremely lean in all aspects of life. Um, we're extremely like every ounce, every penny is accounted for. Um, and that is something that I take a look at specifically is what more can we, uh, can we, can we cut out? Do we need this particular subscription? And we've even as gone as far as questioning the, uh, the ROI of zoom, which is, you know, somewhere around a hundred dollars. And so if we can cut it, we'll cut it. No, no, I think that's fine. I mean, your biggest cost, though, all that stuff you just mentioned is fine. But your biggest cost, you have 150 full time designers. I mean, that, right. that's every improvement you make there is going to drastically hit your bottom line. What, where I'm confused is you said these 150 designers are full time with you. But if you're yes. total all in expenses every month, let's assume all 180,000 bucks of your expenses went towards their salaries. You're paying each of them on average 1200 bucks a month or an annual salary of like 15 grand and they're full time with you. There's no way those design. I mean, depending on where they're from, you can't make a living, yeah. at least in the States on 15 grand a year. Correct. And that's because, and that's the beauty of, of a service very similar to ours. Um, we don't primarily source a lot of our talent here in the United States. It wouldn't be feasible if we were to do it here in the United States. Yeah. We wouldn't be where we are today if it wasn't for that. We primarily source our talent in South we primarily source our talent uh, in Vietnam. My business partner is actually Vietnamese uh, and also the Philippines. Uh, and we're uh, trying to get into other areas of Asia as well. Uh, but that's what allows us to keep our dollars and cents uh, so low. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. That's a good, obviously a good way to do it. Now, you mentioned your total team size is 125 people today. That does not include, obviously, 150 full-time designers, does it? That's all encompassing. Yeah. I think we're at like 133 to be exact. Oh, got it. So you have 133 full time on the team. How many of those are designers? Mm, we have 10 people here in the United States. So it'd be 123. 123 are designers and then 10 are actually running the business. Yeah. How many of the 10 are engineers? When you say engineers, do you mean like they design write engineers? Write code? Um, none. Okay, got we it. We don't have anybody that writes code here. Uh, we we primarily have all of our design, our development talent in overseas. So you sort of hire them on an as needed basis as as contractors. No, we have, um, as I mentioned, my business partner is Vietnamese. Uh, so we have a whole team that's specifically over in Vietnam. Okay, but you just said 123 people are full time designers, and the other 10 yeah. are. In, so where who are developers? Yeah, so uh, I didn't take that into consideration. So uh, it would be there's seven developers. So I then see. it would be seven minus 123, which would be 116. Yeah, yeah, got it. Got so it. So about 116 designers. designers. Yeah, that makes good sense. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, by the way, I mean, we live in a, in a flat world now. Global arbitrage on talent is, is really important. And by the way, this isn't like a bad thing, right? There, These are probably great salaries from where you're sourcing these people from. Um, do you have any... So in terms of getting more customers on board, obviously, you're spending money each each month on uh, Facebook ads. About how much are you spending on just total paid ads? I'd say roughly 50. So that's by somewhere. far your number one channel in terms of spend. Yeah, I mean that in terms of that's our biggest expense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, what ch have you tried any sort of strange new channels that have worked well, or is it all traditional Google, Facebook ads, etc.? It's a lot of grit and grind when it comes to SEO. SEO is like our our biggest thing. Uh, content, um, lead gen, things like that. 
Uh, we do a lot of like outreach when it comes to partnerships. So we do have a special connections to a couple of accelerators and incubators uh, that generate uh, affiliates, essentially affiliate commission and things like that. So that's been a channel that we're consistently growing. We see a lot of opportunity for. We want to definitely grow that in 20, the rest of 2020, which is only a couple of months. But for sure, in, in 2021, uh, we're going to go pretty heavily in inside of just network marketing and things of that nature, which essentially is you um, or us, excuse me, uh, getting other people to promote who we are and what we do and getting ourselves in front of new audiences because a lot of people don't understand what unlimited graphic design is. They have no idea what subscription models are when it comes to graphic design. And uh, we, we're trying to fix that. So when people use a, an adjective or like or a verb that says I need graphic design or graphic designing of any kind, we want people to start using the word Penji and not that of uh, other industry uh, leaders that are either in our space and also in a marketplace space. So if someone brings you a five hundred dollar a month customer as a partner, what commission do you pay them? Fifteen percent. Over what period of time? Recurring. For the life. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. Um, and how long does the average customer stay with you? Somewhere around four to six months. Four to six. Why not longer? I mean, this strikes to me like this is essentially replacing a full-time designer. They should have really long life, life cycles. Uh, good question. Uh, competition. So competition and loyalty is something that is extremely volatile in what it is that we do. Um, like all type of service base, SaaS is something great because once you're in it, you're in it in the ecosystem. And so now it's a matter of like, how can you, how can you build an ecosystem where people have no choice but to stay with you? And that's something that we're, we're, we're slowly figuring out. And, and I think we'll have a better answer for that in 2021. So what's your gross revenue turn annually? Uh, for this particular year, like expectations? No, like last month, what was your revenue churn in, in the month or, or just turn in general? How do you think about churn? Oh, you said churn. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, so it's somewhere between 10 to 20, uh, excuse me, 10 to 20 percent, depending upon the month. And I say that because it was skewed because of COVID. Um, but in short, we want to get under 15. Uh, last month in particular, it was somewhere around 12 percent. Yeah. By the way, this makes sense now while you, why your CAC is so low compared to your monthly recurring revenue for a new account. It's because it's not like traditional SaaS where lifetime value is 40, 50 months. Your lifetime value is, you know, you, you turn over almost, you know, 120% of your base every year annually. Yeah, absolutely. And that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Who uh, takes the business? That, I mean, who do you compete with? I'd rather say, not say the names on air, um, but there are some competitors that if they were, if you were to Google the word unlimited graphic design, you'd definitely see a lot of people. The thing is, it's, this is a super easy to understand. Um, this is a super easy to set up type of market um, where it doesn't necessarily require a lot of uh, straight up investment. In, on your end, you can literally start a business like this with a website and a funnel in order to just drive uh, to drive them through. So you could use it through Trello. You could do it through email if you really wanted to. You could do it through Slack. So the cost of starting this up isn't necessarily all that high. Mm -hmm. And I think for that in particular, it kind of just, it, it destroys the market. So if somebody has a 15 day money back guarantee, which we do, somebody else has a 30 day money back guarantee, somebody has a, a, a free trial, a freemium model, it kind of disrupts it. And so we have to separate ourselves in the marketplace as the industry leader, A, uh, and also a reputable resource for them to use. So we're not going to, so they go on our website, they feel that, that we could take care of them. Yeah. A lot yeah. of emotion involved, unfortunately, in this world, whereas SaaS, maybe not so much. But I mean, look, world, Canva is a SaaS yes. version of you. There's Absolutely, no people, yeah. right? There's no yeah. people. It's it's just empower people to do it so easy. They don't have to hire somebody else, right? So that's like your, in my opinion, that's your true, I mean, that's your true competitor. Yeah. Um, I would either say that or not like a 99 design for sure. Um, that's probably our biggest, uh, our biggest competitor is that. Yeah. How many designs are you processing per day? That is not my world um, at all. I'm not the technology arm, but we do have technology for that. I would say in upwards, like several thousand. I would say in the close to the five digit mark. Yeah, got it. Uh, so yeah, I'll call it like a thousand per day, something like that. Oh, it's definitely more. Yeah, it's definitely more than that. But yeah. um, And what, what what is the number one use case people use you for in terms of design? Is it like podcast logo or blog thumbnail or YouTube thumbnail? 
I'm not gonna, I'm going to use you as an example if that's okay. Yeah. Um, but very similar to people like yourself, content creators, people who are constantly posting, interviewing people that don't feel like doing it themselves. The second thing, and I think is probably the biggest is agencies, people who are, have a ton of clients. Again, another one of those businesses that's super cheap to set up. You don't really have to do anything and you don't have to have the credibility to get a client, uh, but you do need the resources and you do need the power uh, and the engine to help you that with that. So agencies are probably number one um, because they have an in-house designer already. Maybe they're extremely busy. They don't want to hire somebody else uh, full time at $60,000 a year. They want to hire a company like ours at uh, you know $10,000 a year. Uh, which is far better than than that of 60. And I definitely want to say that we're not replacing graphic design. Um, we have a very strong passion for the world of graphic design and respect for it. And there's a need for high talented $60,000, $100,000 a year people. Um, so we're not replacing them. We're just adding it to it because that $60,000 person is extremely busy. They don't want to do small stuff in the grunt work and they give it to us. You know, I think people get that. I, I think they totally get that. Um, okay, this makes good sense. Um, anything else that you want to touch on that we haven't chatted about already? No, I mean, you know, I think in 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 all, I hope that people resonate with this story and, and I hope that they hear the numbers, the dollars, the cents, but also the fact that we're bootstrapped. We've never received an ounce of funding. We never plan on doing that. I think those types of businesses are few and far between. I think it's now sexy to go out and get capital. And I think that is an extremely awesome thing to do if your business needs that. Uh, but if you can go as long as possible and eat as much dirt, if not more dirt than we did, uh, I think that you'd be far better off as a business and as a human being um, than just succumbing to capital right out the gate without an MVP or initial idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jonathan, I think to your point earlier, this reminds me of the diaper story from Bezos, right? Diapers.com in Brazil uh, was getting a lot of business. Bezos said, you know what? We can afford to lose more money for a longer period of time until these guys go out of business. So I'm going to decrease our diaper prices. Why yeah. can't one of your competitors that's venture backed go raise literally they go their pitch deck to go raise money says we're going to spend more dollars on cpc to drive penji out of the google ad market um yeah. they can't pay our rates and until they go out of business we'll keep our rates super low once they go out of business we'll jack them back up yeah there's nothing stopping somebody from doing that um and we've actually have seen that um in somewhat happening now um i don't Think that that would work because at the end of the day, uh, our SEO in particular and our just brand recognition is going to speak for itself. But yeah, you're 100 percent right. It's definitely possible. Who I, do you I pay do for your SEO? In, is it in house? In house, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you you do well. I mean, some of your top terms are like cool logos or graphic design websites or online shopping apps. These sorts of things which drive you hundreds of free clicks each each month. Yeah, that's. Definitely, um, myself and my uh, co-founder's background is uh, lead generation wow. inbound and SEO. Like that, if you were to give me a definitive like definition, I am the CMO, not the CEO. Um, yeah. And so my brain is more so in the marketing, getting in front of people, emotional aspect. Yeah, no, this all makes sense. Uh, and I'm just going through Ahrefs, sort of looking at, at, at again, what, what we're doing ranking really well for paid spend, things of that nature. But very cool, man. Let's, uh, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, favorite business book. Uh, never get a real job by Scott Gerber. Good friend. Had him on my podcast. Amazing guy. What's your podcast? Uh, it's actually in limbo right now, but I'm going to be calling it Mind Grapes. It's going to be launching in 2021. Um, it used to be called Blind Entrepreneurship, but Mind Grapes is going to be it. I hope it's entertaining as hell. Otherwise, you're going to end up in the white noise of all the other podcasts launching. Why do you think I'm re... Uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm redoing it. It was so, it was so boring. Um, it was just... Not as good. You ask really good questions, and and you're far more into, more intelligent than I am. So uh, well, I don't. I don't want to give me that credit. I would just say I I am very aware of the fact that even like I could be the dumbest person on earth, but if I can create entertaining content, I'm going to get the eyeballs over a PhD covering the same topic matter. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, I uh, it's something I'm constantly thinking about, but I I think the idea is I want to create more content. So I can drive more eyes to the to the business and whether it's entertaining to me. If it's an entertaining to me, it's going to be entertaining for somebody else. Yeah. All right. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Uh, Tony Shea. Tony Shea nope. from Zappos. Um, I've, I've always loved him. I've, I've always loved how 
he started Zappos and he was able to upgrade your shipping in two days or whatever it may be. He said it's going to be delivered in seven. It ends up being delivered in 24. Um, that that level of experience, I think, has never been matched. It's it's never been done better than that to this day. Um, so Tony Shea, 100 percent. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building the company? I think I'm going to go out on a limb here and say something completely different uh, than most. But Snowvio, I think, was is a pretty dope um, tool. Um, basically, what Snowvio does is it goes, it basically gives you the email address um, and the contact of the person that you're looking for. Uh, I think we spend somewhere around fifty dollars a month for it. They may have increased their prices, but if you're trying to get into places, I think that's a great tool to use. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Seven. And what's your situation? Married, single, kids? Single. And okay. uh, I also think that that would be that was a, another um, that attribute to our success is the fact that I don't have much responsibilities, um, and and I'm incredibly grateful for that. I do have a girlfriend, but I'm not married. I, I kind of just live my own life. I don't watch TV. I love basketball, but I don't really. I don't have a Netflix account. I don't even have cable. I haven't had cable in the past six years. So, um, and how old are you? That kind of gives you, I'm, I'm 31. So take us home here. Then last question. What's something you wish you knew when you were 20? You're stubborn and you need to be more patient. Uh, I think patience, I wish I was taught that at an early, uh, at a young age. Um, I'm the still to this day, the type of person that needs instant gratification. But I think as I'm getting older and wiser, um, I'm realizing that it's, I don't deserve it or I just need to wait longer. And, um, and I think the past, this past year in particular with a lot of personal and, uh, trauma to my family, uh, in losing somebody very close to us, uh, I'm realizing that life is far too short and you just got to go full gusto. Uh, but also you have to be patient and understanding. And and I think that's what's really gotten me through probably one of the hardest years of my personal life. Penji.co, 1,000 customers pay on average $500 per month for unlimited graphic design. They broke a million dollar run rate back in 2018, a $2 million run rate in 2019, on track to break, call it a four, four and a half million dollar run rate this year. They've got 116 designers they employ full time from all around the world, 133 total on the team, seven engineers. They've done all of this by bootstrapping the company. They profit about $170,000 per month on $350,000 in top line revenue as they continue to scale. Churn is an issue, but it's an issue for everybody in this space is it really is sort of a bidding war on keywords in Google. They spend 250 bucks to get a new $500 a month customer customer stays for call it six, seven, eight months. All right, Jonathan, thanks for taking us to the top. Your, your mind is incredible. I love it. One more thing before you go, we have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 PM central. It's called shark tank for SaaS. We call it deal or bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.